Hi there. In this short video, I would like to show you how to create a web map out of your QGIS project. So creating a web map can be very, um, you know, hard for people who don't know JavaScripting language and so on. Uh, but it's a common need in the in the nowadays because yeah, we all gather geographical data in our own projects, work or whatever, but we need to communicate them with the outer world. And uh, that map is a very easy way to to um, spread the word about your, your daily work, about your project, about your results and your analysis. So that's why we created the QGIS to leave plugin, which enables you to um, export you, your QGIS um, project to a leaflet-based web map. Leaflet is a JavaScript library, which is open source as well, as well as QGIS. And um, yeah, it's more or less working straightforward. So um, you just need to make sure that it's enabled. Go to plugins and manage and install plugins. Just search for QGIS to leave. And there it is. So uh, sometimes I'm creating more recent versions so the actual version is 9, 0.95 i think this is at the moment it is experimental and the last stable version is about 0.81 i think and um or 0.9 and uh this is available straight out of uh, qgis so it's very easy to install and let's fire it up so the um, the GUI is quite simple. So you have here uh, a, a possible window of layers. So you just press on Get Layers, and you will now uh, see all the layers that are that are currently visible in your project. So if you just unmask one of them, like this raster layer here, um, we can just export these. Um, next step here is a frame width and height. This means the extension of the web map in the browser. So at the moment it is set to 800 to 600 pixels, uh, but you can also switch to full screen. And uh, yeah, what is the extent? So uh, as you can see, the extent of the data is quite this rectangle here. Uh, you can choose this or you can choose whether to take the full extent of the canvas. Uh, let's go back to the GUI and uh, I will say here to layer extent uh, Visible LAs, especially if you have a lot of data. Actually, we are just um, exporting all the layers you have here Not all just the vector layers to a GeoJSON and um, This will be v uh, Visible in the leaflet web map. So if you have a lot of data a lot of megabytes, please press show none you can alter the visibility of layers afterwards in the lily flat web map so we will stick to show all because this is the this is the test um, data which is um, placed in the uh, test file folder of the plugin itself and then here's the coolest part of all so you can choose a lot of different um, base maps actually i'm not using um, arcgis base map but it is not open source as well so leave it um yeah so i like the stamen watercolor very much opacity control means if you have raster data in your current project you can alter the opacity in the leaflet of in the leaflet web map afterwards so i like this feature a lot our pro project folder is here set to temp folder as a default value but you can clearly choose here uh, your uh, destination folder if you don't if you have any question just go to the help tab over here so just press t okay it's now working and there we go and there it is woohoo uh, yeah as you can see we have here our donkeys we have a star we have a polygons or polylines we have the base map and here is our raster file which is at the moment um, an image overlay and Woohoo, here's a opacity controller. So you just easily slide in and slide out, slide out all your rasters. So if you have three, four, five rasters in your web map, this opacity control 
controls all the raster, file, raster data in your current web map. And as I've said, you can alter the visibility of your layers through this um, yeah, layer control here, and you can easily set different layers to be visible in the web map. So you may see here a little, um, little difference. So I'll just press you on this car, nice donkey, and you can see here donkey, which is it, which is um, past HTML. Let's go to this, go to this point. You will see a table. So there's a slight difference between them. I will explain it to you. So um, at the moment we have different kinds of layers here. So this is a graduated layer. This is a um, um, uh, classified layer, I think, or a categorized, yeah, categorized layer. And um, you uh, normally the QGIS to leave plugin tries to uh, tries to translate the current visibility to a leaflet understandable visibility. Um, but you can yeah, somehow alter this um, this behavior. So let's go to the um, let's go to the attribute table here. I have here two columns added, which is called icon exp for export, which means you can just simply type the either the um, HTML address or a local path on your web on your laptop or your desktop um, to a current item. At the moment, I'm just using SVGs, but you can also use PNGs instead. So as you see, we have the premium small, which is this um, the star in the map, and we have the donkeys. Then the other column is called HTML exp, exp as well for export, where you can just type in your HTML content. The main problem with that is you are limited to 255 characters in the HTML content. So use wherever you can URL, URL shorteners and yeah, something like that. So please keep it simple. I'm, I'm not, or I haven't figured out how to, how to create columns which can hold more than 250 characters at the moment. So this is the possibility to, um, yeah, to use content, whatever you like. If you don't have these columns in your attribute table, it will surely stick to the yeah, very, very basic um, table expression. So he will fetch all the columns you have and he will add all those attributes to the uh, table which appears in the pop-up of the, of the layer. So let's go back to that. Uh, so you can see here attribute and value. Attribute is OSM ID and the value which is um, in the attribute table. So this is a current web map. You can, yeah, zip it uh, really easily. So let's go to my file system here. Go to the temp folder, which can be a little bit different if you're working on Windows or whatever. So where's my temp folder? Oh, maybe um, I need to go back here. So uh, somewhere, where is it? Oh. There it is, and um, yeah, so it's all exported to a very uh, easable, uh, easy, easy readable format here. Export, which is the date and the time, and you have the index HTML. You have the data folder where all your JavaScript or GeoJSONs are stored, as well as the JPEGs and um, the, the JPEG AUX XML. I don't know if the if leaflet really needs it. I don't think so. Then you have a CSS file which is created, so we will have a look into that. Yeah, fine. So there's a section for the body and the HTML map, and a section for the for the slider at the moment. That's it. And yeah, that's probably everything you need. You can have a lot of other information stored here. So normally, if you see a leaflet-based web map, you will probably find these folders. So just zip it together and um, send it by email or put it on your web server wherever you like or embed it through an iframe on your website so um, it will work and um, it is quite simple so 
this is a basic information you can now press on stop on your YouTube on my YouTube channel if you're interested what is happening beyond that plugin please follow me into the deep field of leaflet pl um, QGIS plugins so let's go to the plugin itself uh, which is stored here at Python plugins and uh, QGIS to leaf I will now give you a short walk through through my code because I need support for that it looks shitty it looks really shitty and I need others to clean it up maybe and make it more readable and make it more flexible uh, for further implementations and um, where is it QGIS to leave exec.py yeah let's go there as you can see there are more or less three parts over here so there's a starting point then you have a lot of code inside here then you have this large section uh, which is probably the base map creation and then you have the ad adding of all the layers afterwards so let's go to the front um, the main main plugin orientates on the on the layer list so it c catches all the layers so for i in all layers it is stated here we'll just ask whether the layer list uh, or we have or at the moment i have a problem with really strange layer names so especially spanish guys tends to use special characters or you have blanks in the layer names and so on so on so i need to make some yeah, rec expression um, section here and yeah if it's a vector layer so if the type of the layer is vector i will just um First of all, I will um, store it as a GeoJSON. Afterwards, um, I will ask whether it is a single marker points, single marker lines, single marker polygons, and so on, categorized points. And uh, in this, it is um, implemented, okay, fetch the color of the point, fetch the uh, width of the line of the point, fetch the opacity of the layer, fetch the opacity of the um, of the symbol itself and um, it is stored in the GeoJSON right away so especially uh, for line and file input data store so this is reading the lines uh, of the file and then you make a line replacement and you put you know, you play you, you replace this here with this so you will define the color you will define the transparency or opacity of the fill in the layer and, and uh, so on so this goes all the way down and it is a lot of coding and it more or less looks always the same so i think there can be pretty much some kind of makeup of this section so um as i've said it's quite the same and here comes the raster layers which is not that dense I will store the raster layer to a JPEG and you need to have um, GDAL installed for that um, because I make a sub process call over here to translate your raster type whatever it is JPEG TIFF or whatever to a JPEG file itself and I will keep the ratio uh, but I need to translate it to EPSG 4326 which is WGS84 and yeah so I will store it and um, that's it at the moment and yeah here's some extent programming so just ask whether the extent is uh, for the layers or for the whole canvas and uh, if it's for the whole canvas I don't know what canvas CRS you're using so I need to translate it to 4326 and translate also the um, maximum minimum coordinates to the current um, to this new coordinate system um, but I think I can change it and make some if statements out of there if the, if, if the renderer is already in WGS84 oh well let's see and now here comes some yeah some nasty parts so each base map version like if base map name is OSM hot I will use this and this will be right into the uh, index HTML uh, right away so you can just choose and use attribution also and so on now I will 
I always use this with open statement. So um, as you can see here, right middle, which is a text over over there, then base map text. You can see it here. Base map text is written down there, and then I close the file again. And once again, I will go all, over all the layers, and then I will write the um, the variable statement of JavaScript into the file itself, and um, um, make some statements over here how the fill color must behave because it is dependent on the on the um, on the um, input of the file. So there's a function working on, and it, the function is working on the feature. So every feature has its own radius, has its own color, and its own transparency maybe. And this is done over here all the way down. So especially for each categorized, each graduated, and each single po single point line or polygon type. Um, but there are some specialities, especially if you're using your own icon, you need to change this here. So there's an icon size set by default, and your icon may be different from the icon I'm using in my examples. So um, you need to change that. That's why the comment stated there. And um, yeah, then you have some feature groups uh, definition. And um, yeah, then I have here um, stating everything here in the map. So let's everything be let everything be visible. Then I will add the rasters afterwards. And um, yeah, that's it somehow. Then the control of the layers, so the layer control in the upper part is defined and all the layers are added to that. And at, in the end, I will add the opacity control and that's it more or less. So, uh, oh no, where? That is fine. So if the extent is layer extent, I will fetch the extent of all the layers. So that's why I'm asking here for the feature group and get the bounds. Um, yeah, and that's yeah, that's it. That's it. How the how the um, whole plugin works um, behind. And as I've said, it's coding style only mothers could love. But um, I hope you like the plugin. I hope you will use it and um, please contribute. So it is um, listed on GitHub, and you can easily make up an issue if something's not working, and I will try to fix it. Next steps will be um, to change from or to yeah to go from the GeoJSON to uh, TopoJSON, TopoJSON, which will um, decrease the file sizes and make the web map more, more yeah, or faster. And um, yeah, that's it at the moment. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you like it. Please press on uh, I like or whatever. And visit my blog or visit our blog, digitalgeography.com, where we'll have yeah, news on GIS, open data, geodata, and whatever has to do with um, geo. Thank you very much. Goodbye.